Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, this is still Saturday, November 23rd, and it's 6.28 p.m. All right, I thought it was time to do a Bible teaching. We need to get into the Word of God. There's been so much in the news, so much negative. It can be looked at positively, though, for some of us, but... I thought, well, here's what happened. I was doing some email and somebody sent me, thank you, Crystal, uh, something from Samuel. Okay, the book of Samuel. And I pulled it up and it was highlighted at, at verse 10. And we'll get to verse 10, but I'm going to go all the way to verse 36. And hopefully I'll remember to stop there. Because beyond that, it sounds more like David, this is about David and the Lord saving him from his enemies and how he is, it can re relate to us nowadays. You see, the Bible is twofold. Many scriptures are prophetic. They happened before, but they're also prophetic. They're going to happen again. Okay, so let me get started. Let me pray first. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to please let your Holy Spirit use my mouth for any commentaries that I make. Let me speak only the truth and anything that you would have me to say. Help me to say it right. And in love, in Jesus' name, Amen. Alright, let's get started. I'm in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 22. Now, I'm using the NASB, as that's my favorite. And it starts off with a subtitle, or title, whatever. This part is called David's Psalm of Deliverance. It's called a psalm, but it's in 2 Samuel. And David spoke these words of this song to the Lord in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Now, literally, the word hand is palm. That must be what they use in King James. I did read the King James Version that she sent first. And I just, you know, wanted to use a version with more modern words. He said, this is verse 2, 2 Samuel 22, verse 2. He said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge. My Savior, you save me from violence. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. For the waves of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. Can you see that happening in the future for some? Or maybe it's already happened for some of you. Like when you were in... Well, she probably doesn't listen to my videos, but one of our sisters was in Houston during that hurricane. I think it was 2017, the one that was so bad in Houston. It seemed to just dump all that water on Houston, and it was just thundering and lightning and pouring down rain and... It was just really awful, and they were trapped down there, and you couldn't get out if you wanted. And this is like that, for the waves of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of hell, well, I say hell, it's Sheol, the netherworld, surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. Yes, I cried to my God, and from his temple he heard my voice. See, our prayers do not fall on deaf ears. 
You call upon the name of the Lord. He will hear you. It goes on to say, and this is verse 7, And my cry for help came into his ears. Then the earth shook and quaked. The foundations of heaven were trembling and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up out of his nostrils. Now I want to say this right here <clears throat> based on this scripture. The foundations of heaven were trembling and were shaken because he was angry. I think this is prophetic for future. The anger of God, the judgment, the things that are going to be happening, the powers that be that are trying to make things happen their way are going to find that God is going to overrule them and do things his way, how he wants them to be, where he wants the earth cracked up, and so forth. All right. Smoke went up out of his nostrils, in his, or smoke went up in his wrath out of his nostrils. Fire, I don't know why they cut out that in his wrath, because see, that's what it'll be. It'll be done in the judgment will come from his wrath. Fire from his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also. This is the verse that she had highlighted or looked up, I guess. He bowed the heavens also and came down with thick darkness under his feet. Now, that message that I got about when he comes, there will be thick darkness after the rapture. Okay, let's just try to imagine that and listen to this. He bowed the heavens also and came down with thick darkness under his feet. And he rode on a cherub and flew and he appeared on the wings of the wind. And he made darkness canopies around him. So, I don't see how anybody's going to see him when it's it sounds like this. This is the word of God. A mass of waters, thick clouds of the sky. From the brightness before him, coals of fire were kindled. Which means we're talking about fires going on. This is going to be a whole other different kind of what's going on now. Massive wires, thick clouds of the sky. The sky is going to be all darkened. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out arrows, and he scattered them, lightning, and routed them. He sent out arrows and scattered them. He also sent out lightning and routed them. Routed means confused. Then the channels of the sea appeared. The foundations of the world were laid bare. Now that hasn't happened yet, has it? The foundations of the world were laid bare. By the rebuke of the Lord at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from on high. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy. This tells me, as this is about to happen, things there could be like a really bad, horrible storm going on before we're taken. So remember that. That's what I'm seeing here. And then he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy. 
from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. Yeah, in our own strength, we would never make it. That's why we have to call upon the name of the Lord. We have to rely on our spiritual armor, our spiritual warfare prayers. We must do it. It is imperative for us at this time of our lives. Because they are too strong for us. In our own strength, we are nothing. Let me move on to verse 19. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me forth into a broad place. He rescued me. Now listen to this. Because he delighted in me. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. Now remember that word recompense in Psalm 91 it talks about the, there's a, the, a thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand it will not come near me for I will only look on with my eyes and see the recompense of the evil that's payback that's reward or punishment, depending on what you deserve. All right. And also in that verse 91, I think that's talking about people who are down here helping. Either we're already in our glorified bodies, helping folks through this, getting them saved, ready for the second rapture. Or third, I don't know if there could be another one right after the three days of darkness. I don't know. Anyway, going by just the word of God. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. That's keeping your slate clean. And how do you do that when we keep sinning? We ask for forgiveness as soon as you can. As soon as you realize, oops, I shouldn't have said that. Or, oh, I shouldn't have thought that thought. Do it right then. Keep your slate clean. Keep your hands clean. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not acted wickedly against my God. For all his ordinances were before me. And as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. Now back then, David was speaking of all the laws given to Moses. And it wasn't just ten on two tablets of stone. They had many laws and statutes. All the laws about the feast days. All the different kinds of animal sacrifices they had to keep. All the different, uh, there were 600 and some laws that they had to keep. Statutes and ordinances. He said, I did not depart from them. And surely if he did, he did his animal sacrifices at the time they were supposed to do them for the remission of sins. No more of that. God changed every bit of that when he died on the cross. He was the final, perfect, sacrificial lamb. He changed it all. We do have laws and ordinances to follow. We have to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and with all our strength. And we have to love our neighbors, that's everybody else, as ourselves. We have to. That's a law. It's a statute. It's our ordinance to follow. And how do you love your neighbor as yourself? Jesus talks about that. Paul teaches us more. You don't just pass by them and I wish you well, brother. Let me pray for you. 
You do what you can to help them. Do what you can. Pray for people, of course. You spend time with God. Put Him first. That's the first commandment. Just like the, they, they follow the Ten Commandments. But Jesus made them harder. We can't just now not murder. We have to not hate in our heart. Because that's like murder in our... That's committing murder in our heart. We can't just... Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's sleep, sleeping with somebody during your marriage or after you're divorced. Jesus made it where if you got divorced, you remarried. It's supposed to be adultery. He said it's adultery. So, we... We have harder, actually, we have it a little harder than them, but on, on one hand. But Jesus did, let me remind you, he said, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and lonely. <laughs> lowly and my yoke is easy and my burden is light see he didn't say there'd be no burden involved he didn't mean there'd be nothing we had to do there is a yoke there is a burden putting the flesh to death picking up our cross daily you don't take a day off from being a Christian. Uh, helping your neighbor, visiting the sick, feeding the poor, clothing the naked, giving someone that's thirsty a drink of water. I mean, just a little act of kindness. If that, that's all you can do at that moment, you do that, it's like giving that water to Jesus. Whatsoever you do, for the least of anyone that you're doing for Jesus. Please don't forget that. Look at helping people as doing it for Jesus. So there's loving God most, putting Him first, spending time with Him, and while you're out there in the world, you love your neighbor as yourself. You got to pray for people that make you mad. That's how you keep from being angry at them. You learn to love them by praying for them. Let me move on. For all his ordinances were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was also blameless toward him, and I kept myself from my iniquity he must mean the things that he was uh tempted to do he kept himself from doing them the sins he could have committed we know what david did with bathsheba a married woman he lusted after her he called her to his palace saw her bathing on her roof it's strange having a bathtub on your roof. But anyway. So they had sex. And he got pregnant. <laughs> she got pregnant. He had his her husband sent to the front lines of the war. The battle that the Israelites were in. And he was killed. And so he basically murdered him. So he could have her. Now, that was huge sin there. And, and yet David was the apple of his eye. So don't think that your sins are not forgivable. Don't think that your sins cannot be forgiven. David did some big boo-boos. Yeah, he did. Major sins. But he repented. He was grieved over what he had done. He was punished. The baby died. It didn't it did not live. And he had prayed and prayed and prayed to let for God to let that baby live and it didn't live. 
Anyway, let's move on. Keep yourself from your iniquity. Therefore the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness. He got rewarded, in other words, according to my cleanness before his eyes. With the kind, you show yourself kind. With the blameless, you show yourself blameless. With the pure, you show yourself pure. And with the perverted, you show yourself astute. I had to look that up. When I got looked at the Strong's Concordance meaning for astute didn't make any sense. So I said, I got to look that up in our language. And I had to go to Google. <laughs> I should have left it up. What does astute mean? Thank you. Still there, my first one. It brings right up to dictionary astute. Having or showing an ability to accurately assess situations or people and turn this to one's advantage. You're shrewd, sharp, sharp-witted, razor-sharp, acute, quick. How can we be astute with the perverted, with the wicked? It's saying, David said, and with the perverted, you, God, it's capital U, capital Y, show yourself astute. Okay, I hope that, that helped you understand that. And you save an afflicted people, but your eyes are on the haughty whom you abase. He lowers them. He, You will be punished when you're haughty. And that means prideful. And you think you know it all. Or you think you're something. Or you're it. You're God's gift to YouTube land. Or whatever. You know. Be careful. Watch yourself in that area. Don't be haughty. I pray God will kill all haughtiness or pridefulness in me and let me not be found that for you are my lamp O Lord and the Lord illumines my darkness that means when you're in your dark days and you feeling down and maybe depressed sad worried when we shouldn't be worried it's really a sin to worry because God has it, whatever it is. Trust in Him with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. And He will direct your paths. That's Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. No matter what, learn that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And know that He has this, whatever it is. In your life okay for by you which is capital Y I can run upon a troop by my God I can leap over a wall in other words we'll be able to do things we wouldn't normally be able to do with God with God in us we'll have the strength as for God, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is tested. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is a rock besides our God? God is my fortress. God is my strong fortress, and he sets the blameless in his way. He makes my feet like hinds feet, and he sets me on my high places. He trains my hands for battle, so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. He trains my hands for battle. 
That's after we're raptured, the first raptured people. We will be trained for battle to come back to harvest the wheat. Verse, let's see. Yeah, verse 36. You have also given me the shield of your salvation and your help makes me great. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. You have to, without having an, how do I put this? Without being high and mighty and all prideful, you have to have the attitude, I know who I am in Christ. When people put you down and they call you names or demons try to put thoughts in your head like, who do you think you are? You didn't get that from God. You are nobody. Look what you did yesterday. They'll remind you of your sins. You have to realize negative thoughts like that are coming from the enemy. You have to rebuke them immediately. Say, get thee behind me, Satan. I know who I am in Christ and you are nothing. Go back to the dry places where you come from and bother me no more. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself and my home, and you are not welcome here. That thing will leave because you spoke the name of Jesus and you pleaded the blood. Those thoughts should stop. And if they don't, you keep calling upon the name of the Lord. Because it could mean you have an open door. That means think you got to think. Lord, what did I do that opened the door for a demon to attack me like that? Did I do anything wrong? And just if you can't think of something, say, Lord, I repent anyway of anything I did, anything I said. I close the door now. If you will, show me what it is and I will repent specifically. Otherwise, please just forgive me for anything I've done wrong. Please close that open door. Let it not be open anymore. And you just start praying like that and sing praise and worship music. That thing will leave. It will leave. Don't let it have a place in your mind. Okay? All right. With that, I'm going to say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over the internet connection, over my computer, over each and every one of you and all of your devices and our internet connections. And with that, I say bye for now. I will talk to you later.